about 12 or 13 mil or half an inch which will remain black but I'm just exposing the inner parts of the letters at this stage I've removed all the masking and I'm sealing everything in with a transparent base. I always use the transparent base over the top of the hot rod sparkles or the sparkle flake because it seems to fill them in a lot better for me. It means it takes less clear to fill them. For by all this it also has good UV inhibitors. And just one or two light coats will do. I'm now starting to mask up the design. Just making sure I've got every area covered. I'm now going to use the 4500 Sparkle Flake series, and these are pre mixed and ready to go. Just shake them up and put them straight into the bottle. And amazingly, I'm using a mini jet with a 0.8 setup. You see how much masking I've got up here? The sparkle flake tends to travel quite a bit, get a lot of overspray with it. So make sure you've got everything completely covered. And I'm looking to put about four or five coats on here. It's important to give it quite a good flash off and heat set it between coats. And I'm holding the gun about 14, 15 inches away from the surface. Third coat going on. You can see the coverage already. Keep it light. Keep the gun well back for better atomization. I'm just drying this now with my SATA dry jet. Uh, there's really no substitute for heat, but because I've got vinyl around the Stealth Creations, that half inch of vinyl, I'm reluctant to put a lot of heat in there at this stage. So the dry jet's good for dr just drying it between coats when you've got vinyl on there. And this is orange flake I've used. And now I'm doing the Creations with cinnamon. You notice my finger just constantly switching off and on. What I'm doing is trying to create as much turbulence in the fluid nozzle as possible. And that gives you a much, much better atomization with the flake. Again, about four or five coats here. And I'm back in just locking everything down with my transparent base. This really is my get out of jail free card. It keeps everything even for me. Gives me a much, much less of a build up. And makes clear coating a lot easier. And now that the vial's removed, I can get a lot of heat on here. Make sure the paint is thoroughly cured. Okay, I'm now just going to work on the back of the car. And I'm using metallic orange. I'm going to spray a third of the whole car just using a 0.8 mini jet. When I used to use old solvent based paints, I would have had to use the bigger gun. The, the solvent based paints seem to atomize a lot more, they go on a lot drier. So subsequently I would have had to use the bigger gun. But amazingly I'm going to do the back of the whole car with about a pint or half a litre of metallic burnt orange. Again three coats over the base coat so they're dark. There's no dry overspray issues here, so obviously I'm using a lot less paint.
If you do happen to get any imperfections, you can just knock them back with a piece of dry 800 or 1000. Obviously make sure you have heat cured it prior to this. And just, just dust another coat over the top. I'm now applying Sparkalescent Mango over the top of the burnt orange. Just two or three light coats. The Sparkalescent range is part of the 4500 series of ultra bright colours. I tend to use these quite a lot in my helmet and bike designs because they're just so bright. And I'm just finishing the third coat. Okay, now I'm taking some metallic brandy red and I'm just doing a fade from the bottom. Again, I'm not using any reducer here at all. This is one of the reasons why I use a 0.8 setup. I find with the 1 or the 1.2 setup in the mini jet, uh, the paint comes out a little bit too quick, doesn't atomize just as well. If you are using like a 1.2 setup with a mini jet, you'd really want to put some reducer in there. But I like the 0.8 because it means I can use it straight out of the bottle. Just gives a higher level of atomization and helps the fades. Okay, I'm just using my transparent base again, Old Faithful, just lock everything down for me, give me a smooth surface to work to, and one coat would be plenty for this. Back up to the front of the car now, and I'm shooting iridescent bright yellow, and I'm just putting three coats on over base coat sealer dark. I'm using about a pint or half a litre to do the whole front of the car. It's pretty impressive for a yellow over a black. It's at this stage I'm going to remove all the masking and clear coat the car just to seal everything in. Give me a fresh start for when I start to do the artwork. You don't have to do this, you could easily continue working here, but I like to get everything completely sealed before I start my artwork. We've low baked the clear and left it overnight, and now we're sanding everything down. Darren's just using a DA sander here with a 1000 dry rubbing pad. You could wet sand this, it'll take a long time, I find the DAs are a lot quicker. Any areas you can't get with a DA, or indeed if you don't have one, as I say, you can just sand it down with 1000 wet and dry. Okay, now we're ready to start the airbrushing. I'm just putting some drop shadows and highlights into the logos and again I'm using my transparent black with about 10 or 20 percent reducer. The transparent black and the transparent white are the only two transparents that I actually use reducer on. It's not that they're any thicker than the other paints it's just I need them to be a little bit more transparent obviously for highlights and shadows. Most of the other transparents I just shoot straight through the 05 needle without reducing but in this case I put about maybe 10 or as I say, maximum 20% reducer. 